really us using rock music with rap came out of necessity. We we back in the day there was um, when rap was coming up, there was nothing to rap over because everything was like John Travolta the disco, the disco <laughs> thing. So we had to find beats and we would use old rock beats or old jazz beats in order to rap over. Peter Piper is actually Bob James Mardi Gras and um, um, Walk This Way. I didn't even know the name of the record. I used to call the record, um, what did I call the record? Um, uh, huh? Yeah, Toys in the Attic. So we didn't, and DJs <laughs> were stingy so they would actually scratch their names off the record. So you didn't know the name of the record. You're trying to peek over at Africa Bambada. You couldn't read it because he's not, you're not stealing my beat. So, you know, I was like, I read that, that it said Toys in the Attic, but we didn't want to rap those lyrics. We, we were in there messing around, me and D&J, with the beat, and Russell um, comes in, and we just, the job of the DJ was only to play the beginning of the record. When it got to the crazy hillbilly gibberish, <laughs> I'm not, I'm just telling you this how we looked at it, from the hood. We didn't know what he was saying, you know. Back to and I need to go. We didn't. That was a bad thing. <laughs> it was a bad thing if the DJ let the guy sing because your, the DJ's job was to keep the beat going, a little bit of the guitar, and if the singing comes in, it's a rap. You made a mistake. But he comes in with Rick Rubin, Russell, because he was meeting all type of dudes, and and we're trying to just kick some real old school rhymes over it, and Rick is like, "Yo, you should do this whole record over." And we like, what, what, are you talking about Toys in the Attic? He said, the record's not Toys in the Attic, it's called Walk This Way. <laughs> and then he um, played it for us and we like, we had just finished writing Peter Piper and my Adidas, so you want us to take these lyrics and we don't know what the hell he's saying and turn it into rap <laughs> lyrics. So I was like bothered by it, like, oh my God, Russell got this weird dude coming <laughs> here. This is the part of the record we hate. We just wanted to rap over the beat, but you know, we were being open because it was Russell and he was our manager. So you guys go home and you study this record and figure out what they're saying. And so we went to Dee's house. We was getting high in the basement, smoking weed, doing, <laughs> drinking 40s. And we kind of studied it, 40 ounces of beer. So we study it in like a half-assed way, like, all right, you know, let's get back to Hit It Run and Peter Piper and my Adidas and we'll give them their bonus and try to make this record over that we really just wanted to rap over the beat. So we get there and Jay, who's the real DJ of the group, he's looking at us like, dude, y'all are just, y'all are just whack, man. Y'all didn't do what you're supposed to do. We got there hours later, high, looking at him like, we're ready. And we just gave it this half-assed like, come on D, let's do it. So we can get on to the records that you know we think are gonna be the biggest hits. So we like, backseat lover. Hide underneath the cover, didn't know what we were saying. Like, and Jay, who's the real street dude from the, yo, get serious, man. You wasting everybody's time, Joe D. So we just put our heart into it a little bit and tried to make it work. And, and we then switch off. Don't just say it in your backseat. Love, you know, he's trying to, so he's screaming at us. And then we leave the studio back to Queens to go get high again, because that's what we did. That was, that was our thing. It was weed and beer. And Jay, who's involved with Rick Rubin and Russell and then Aerosmith coming in, he calls us and he's like, yo! I'm like, what? He's calling me, look what you talking about, Jay? This is gonna be the best record on the album. I was like, damn, D, they got Jay. Like, this, <laughs> this is gonna be the big, and I, but mind you, I already had Peter Piper, My Adidas, hit it, all these Raising Hell, all these records, and Jay's talking about this is gonna be the biggest record on the album. I'm like, turning to Scooby-Doo and I'm like, row, row, you know. <laughs> what Jay's talking about. And they did it and they mixed it and then we put out, you know, what I think um, my Adidas first, which I was happy that, you know, it was, you know, not what Jay said was gonna be the first single, but then the second single, they're like, we're putting out Walk This Way. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And, and they exploded. And it was, it took, I thought we were gonna sell a million albums, we ended up selling multiple millions. And I was happy that I've stayed open and I kind of liken that to, jumping out of a, a helicopter with a parachute. If you don't open your um, parachute, what'll happen? You crash. So I think that the mentor and, and people that are next to you will help you to, to make your vision better.
because if you don't open yourself to other people's ideas, because I was gassed, I was run, I was on my third album, walking like you just, I was crazy. My job was to destroy all MCs, and I was just on my own dick hard. And that was very important in rap that you got that swag, so. But I was open, and since I was open, it ended up being the biggest record, and I think that a lot of people have ideas out there, but there are people next to you probably in your ear that if you incorporate that, I think God did it as me as a test so to, to, I could tell other people, you have ideas, but there's some people probably next to you and around you that also have ideas that could probably take you, because the things that I didn't think was gonna be big ended up being the biggest things that I ever did. And that's my Walk Brilliant. This Way story. Brilliant.